What's up guys, my top five advanced event photography tips. This is from about 10 years experience of shooting events. This is not regurgitated information. It's really just what I've found to be some of the most advanced techniques I kind of naturally picked up from experience or kind of really thought it through, like how can I become a better photographer? So number one, pre-selecting my focal point. When I see something happening, I can't miss that shot. So I'm deciding where I'm gonna place my subject in my frame before the camera even reaches my eye. I do that to save time, and so by the time the camera hits my eye, I can just press the shutter. Number two, and this is gonna sound weird, shoot with both eyes, not just one. Usually I'm just scanning a room, I'm looking around, I see something happening, and at that moment I lift the camera to shoot. But sometimes I know something's going to happen, but it has not happened yet. But I wanna get the most coverage I can. So I can't stay zeroed in on one person. However, I can frame my shot, focus, be ready to go, but use my other eye to scan the room. Then if you see something happening, you can quickly transition, shoot that, and you can always come back to that original person you were photographing. Another thing I do is I actually frame the image with my right eye, my, my dominant eye, and then I use my left eye to kind of monitor the action that's in front of me. And why do I do that? Personally, and I'd love to know what other people think if they've tried this, I think that by not looking through that viewfinder, I'm able to watch what's happening a little bit clearer and time my shot a little bit better. So what I'm doing is I'm just framing with my right eye and making sure everything's in focus, but I'm actually monitoring and observing the action in front of me with both eyes at the same time and using my left eye for my timing because it's not blocked by a viewfinder. This might just be a personal thing. Again, I'd really like to know what other people think. Comment below, I'd, I'd actually really appreciate that. Okay, number three, similar to number two, but we're, we're gonna talk about reading the entire room. Now this might sound like mumbo jumbo to some people, but I I'm, assure you it's not, and any empath would know. There's always energy going on in the room. Follow that energy. Try to predict where things are gonna happen. Okay, number four, so you've learned to follow the energy. Now you're gonna take it another step, and this one's really, really interesting. And I haven't really talked to many people that have told me they do the same thing or can do the same thing. I think it hasn't occurred to people that it can be done, and that is to predict a smile. And it is incredibly easy with practice to know when someone's gonna smile before they smile. The best tip I can give you is it's in the eyes. So if you're watching two people having a conversation, you can see they're going to smile, but when they're speaking, they can't actually smile. But in that pause, that's when they smile. The pause, the break between the sentences, there's going to be a smile. And you, you wait for that, you time it. And once they do it, click, you've got it. So you've learned to follow the energy, you've learned to time your smiles. Now let's talk about how to capture the peak of action. You wanna get like the largest smile, you wanna get, if someone's dancing, you wanna get the height of the movement. So how do you get that? And there's a lot of ways, but today I just wanna give you guys one tip on that. And that would be to actually time the peak of the action slightly ahead. So in other words, what you're gonna do is you're gonna press that shutter right before the peak. And why do you do that? There's two reasons. One, your mechanical ability, your timing, your processing in the mind between your finger pressing down the shutter, there's a tiny delay. And that tiny delay can really matter. And number two is the camera actually has a very tiny delay. So you might, it will look like you've got the shot at the peak of the action, but the camera is actually capturing just slightly behind. So number five, take your picture right before the peak of the action. You can also use a burst of shots if you'd like. One thing I would recommend is right, as, right before the moment happens, you take about three shots. The middle would hopefully be at the peak and then the third would then follow the peak of action. So there you guys are, my top five advanced event photography tips. If you guys have one of your own, if you have questions, let me know in the comments. I'm genuinely curious about what other people think are the most valuable tips for event photography. I'm gonna do some thinking and think about what exactly, what other tips I could pass on because when you actually do that introspection, and you ask like, why am I a successful photographer? You can actually become more successful. And while I think I'm, I've been very successful to this point, I'm always looking to get better. So look forward to hearing from you guys.